So if you've been watching the channel for a while, you probably know what this is, a swing weight scale. You use it to figure out the swing weight of golf clubs, hopefully match up the feel throughout your set. But a lot of people probably don't have a swing weight scale or maybe don't have easy access to one. But there's another place you can go to figure out swing weight, at least in theory, and that's the internet. There are numerous swing weight calculators out there. So what we're going to do today is we're going to check out the top Google results for swing weight calculators. We're going to take some measurements, we're going to plug in those numbers, and we're going to see what kind of swing weight values we get from those calculators. Then we're going to go back, compare them against the actual swing weight scale, and see which of these different swing weight calculators works best. So let's go. Hi everyone, welcome to the Mobile Club Maker. I'm AJ, I hope you're having a wonderful day. So we are gonna dive right into this. We are gonna look at the top three results that you get if you do a Google search of golf swing weight calculator. We're gonna look at a few different clubs, we'll take the measurements, we'll plug in the numbers, see what we get, and then compare it to the actual swing weight scale measurements. See which ones work, see which ones maybe don't work so well, see which ones are the most accurate. Okay, so the four different clubs we're going to be looking at today. First off is just this assembled 56 degree sand wedge. The second club is this seven iron. However, this club is not assembled yet. I have not epoxied it together. So this is going to give us a chance to look at, the, look at these different swing weight scales, look at these calculators, and figure out how good they would be if you were actually building golf clubs too. So this one, we've got the head, the shaft, and in this case, I've got just a cut grip on the end for weighting purposes, so we'll use this for our second club. Third club, this is a 44 and a half inch driver, a little bit heavier shaft, 76 grams. So this will be another good test for the swing weight calculators. Finally, this is what I call my Frankenstein club. Again, this is actually not an assembled club at this point. This is a head I had sitting around and a shaft. It's a heavier head and it's a longer shaft. So. This should actually give us some interesting measurements. We're gonna see how it comes out on those calculators and see if having these sort of more extreme uh, measurements cause any sort of issues there versus using the just plain old swing weight scale. Okay, so what are you gonna to need to take these measurements? Well, pretty much in all these cases, you're gonna need at least some sort of gram scale, some sort of kitchen scale that measures in grams. Now you could use your club making ruler. I could use my club making ruler here that's uh, divided into inches, but I was thinking, you know what, it's probably better to be doing this in metric. I think centimeters is gonna be a little more exact. So in this case, I'm just using a tape measure that has both inches and centimeters, and we're gonna measure all the clubs using this. Also, you wanna have a little masking tape will be helpful, and then something to just sort of write on the masking tape with a pen, a pencil, something like that. Okay, we're gonna look at like I said, the three top Google results. Now, in all fairness, this is actually not the top three because one of the three, which was the Hirico Golf site, has a swing weight calculator, but I could not get it to work. I would plug in numbers and it would not spit out any sort of swing weights, so it's out. So we've got three other sites. We've got a swing weight calculator from leaderboard.com. We've got a swing weight calculator from golf.com. OKRASA.EU. I believe it's a Polish website, but it has a swing weight calculator. And we're also going to use a swing weight calculator from valuegolf.com. Now you will see the first two are very similar in how we take the measurements and how they compute the swing weights. The third one's a little different. So for these first two swing weight calculators, you're going to see you need two basic measurements. First off, you need a static weight for the club, which is just how much the club weighs like this. Putting it on the gram scale, it's helpful if you have a little rubber shaft clamp that you can use just to sort of hold it up so it's not falling all over the place or touching the ground on one side. Okay, the next thing we wanna measure is the balance point of the shaft. So the balance point, basically you're just trying to figure out where does the shaft want to balance perfectly parallel to the ground, so somewhere around here. The way I did this was I started out with just my finger, get a rough idea where it is, at that point, I put a little piece of masking tape on it just right there. Now, if you have chrome shafts or a light colored graphite, 
you probably don't even need this step because you could just use a dry erase marker and write right on them. These shafts are all dark finishes, so that doesn't really work as well. So I'm just going to use the masking tape and then draw on the masking tape. But figure out roughly where it is, put a piece of masking tape right around it there in the general location. And then I just put a little piece of shaft in my vise that I'm going to use basically as a little bit more exact version of my finger to then go and balance the club again, figure out exactly where it measures and balances. And then right there, we're going to put a little line. Okay. Once we've figured out the balance point is we're going to go ahead and measure it. And basically all I did was take my tape measurer, hook one end of it onto the very end of the shaft, and then just measure down to the little line I made right there and measure that in centimeters. Did that for each of these clubs. Okay, so once you have those two measurements, you can basically use two of these three swing weight calculators, both the leaderboard.com site and the golf.okrasa site both just require those two. If you're using the value golf site, it does things a little differently. It factors in the component weights of each of the pieces, the head, the shaft, the grip, and then also the lengths and the final length. You, so you need all that information to get the swing weights on that. So basically, you still just need the gram scale if you can break all the pieces apart and weigh them each individually and then measure out the lengths of them you will have all the information you need. But in that case, it's five or six different things you have to fill in on that chart versus just two on the other one. Okay, so we took all the measurements, we put them into the swing weight calculators. Now let's see what the results were. What swing weights did we get for each of these clubs? So first off, let's use leaderboard.com's uh, swing weight calculator. The wedge came out basically right between D2 and D3. The seven iron came out between D1 and D2. The driver, the 44.5 inch driver, came right out at D1. And finally, the long driver came out at D9. Next up, the golf.okrasa site. The wedge came out at D2.9. The seven iron came out at D1.7. The driver, the 44.5 inch driver, came out at D1.5, and the long driver came out at D9.6. Okay, so now let's look at the value golf site. Again, this was using the component piece weights and lengths to calculate the swing weight. So because of that, and because the wedge was already fully assembled and I didn't want to take the wedge apart, I didn't actually and couldn't put those numbers in. So the wedge is not applicable here. The seven iron, we put in all that information and we got a swing weight of C 8.7. The driver, the 44.5 inch driver, we put it in and we got a swing weight of D 1.1. And the long driver, the 46 inch driver, we got a swing weight of D 9.5. Okay, well, now here is the moment of truth. What are the actual swing weights of these golf clubs and how close were we on all these swing weight calculators. The wedge basically came out right under D3, say D2.8 to D3. The seven iron was right at D1. The shorter of the two drivers, the 44.5, was in between D0.5 and D1. And finally, the long 46 inch driver was between D8.5 and D9. Now, as you can see, the leaderboard.com and the golf.okrasa site came out very well. Those numbers, those swing weights were all within one point of the actual measured swing weight using the scale. So very impressive there using that just the static weight and using that balance point length. Those two measurements got us very accurate results. The value golf site was a little bit more hit or miss. Again, we couldn't do the wedge, but the seven iron came out to be a little bit lighter, a couple points lighter than what the club actually was. The drivers actually came out to be pretty close, but that seven iron was a little further off. The other thing to note about the drivers is when I did these measurements, I did two different weights. I did the weight both at 
the head weight using the adapter in it and I did the head weight where I kept the adapter off it. That adapter and ad adapters in general usually weigh about six grams. So when I did those measurements and I didn't use the added adapter weight in the calculation, I got better numbers. That's where I got that D1.1, that's where I got that D9.5. If I put the adapter weight and added that onto the head weight and then put that into the calculator, then all of a sudden I got swing weights of D4.7 on the shorter driver and E3.4 on the longer driver. So having said all that, I think it's pretty apparent that the swing weight calculators that seem to work best are the ones that are just using those two measurements, the weight and the balance point length. And if you use one of those, and you can do it as we showed here, you can do it for a fully assembled golf club, or you can use component pieces basically dry fit together before you've epoxied and figure out the swing weight before you epoxy it, thereby if you need to add a tip weight or something like that, you can do it before you epoxy it. So it works out very well. The other site, the Value Golf site, again, a little more hit or miss. So you can use it, but I would say it's gonna be not quite as exact, not quite as accurate as the other two. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please go down below, give it a thumbs up. And if you have not already, subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon so you can be alerted when I post new videos. I'm on Instagram. You can find me at Mobile Club Maker. If you have questions or comments, please leave them down below. And until next time, take care.